welcome to this edition of All About Hopkinton, the original HCAM series created to bring you the people and organizations that make our community the great place that it is. I'm your host, Mary Arnott. There are a lot of people dedicating their time, energy, and talents to improve some aspect of life in our town. I'm honored to be sitting here talking with them and sharing their stories with you. Joining me now is Ann Matina of the Hopkinton Historical Society. Hello, Ann. Thank you for being on the show today. Thank you so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, I should have said Ann Matina, the president of the Hopkinton <laughs> Historical Thank Society. Thank you. Yeah. And just so our audience knows that I sit on the board with you and I'm the treasurer, so we get yes. to see each other once in a while. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. There are a lot of new people in town, though, Ann, and some of them may not know you, although I find that hard to believe. But uh, So why don't you tell us a little bit about your background first? Well, I grew up in Massachusetts, in western Massachusetts, in West Springfield, and I've always been interested in local history. Um, my husband and, and children and I moved here 21 years ago to Hopkinton, and I loved Hopkinton's local history as well. We had a small house in the center of town, and uh, which didn't have a bill date for it on the mortgage and, and the documents. So one day I went up to the library to see if they had anything up there that that could tell me when our house was actually built and come to find out it was built after the third of Hopkinton's fire, uh, fires, um, the famous fires in downtown Hopkinton. The house is located right behind Bill's Pizza in the town hall. So um, it, it, the original house was built evidently in the 1840s and 50s when a lot of the houses in town were built. But our particular house was uh, rebuilt after the third fire in 1906. So that kind of got me hooked. I became really interested. Um, I volunteered for a few committees in town. And then in 2010, got active on the 300th anniversary committee, uh, uh, town committee as well, to help uh, contribute to the events surrounding the town's 300th. And during that time, I was the town committee's representative to a really special event that we had. It was the Women's Club, uh, the Historical Society, and the Garden Club. And we all got together and we had a historic house and garden tour. It was incredibly successful. And I uh, got to know the people on the Historical Society and ended up joining at that point. And two years later became, or one year later, became the president. Didn't take very long. <laughs> and uh, I've been the president for two years now. Yeah, you just jumped right in there. Yes, I did. I did. <laughs> well, and I have to say you do a great job, so I'm glad you're our president. Thank you. Uh, and we've had good past presidents as well, oh, too. Yes, so yes. we're lucky with that. Yes. Um, there's so much about the Historical Society that I'm going to talk about. I'm almost not quite sure where we should start, but maybe we'll talk a little bit about our history, the Historical Society history, okay. in terms of when it got started, uh, what does it focus on, uh, where would you like to go with that? Well, I think it's really important so people know that it's a, uh, we're a private group, all volunteer run. Um, we don't non have- Nonprofit. Nonprofit. Mm -hmm. We don't have an official affiliation with the town of Hopkinton beyond just um, obviously really supporting and um, promoting Hopkinton history, but we're not town funded in any way. Um, so it got started, it was founded in 1951. In 1991, uh, the people who had been keeping the uh, uh, association going purchased a very important, historically important building in town. It is um, the former Hayden Row School at uh, 168 Hayden Row. It was built in 1870 um, and operated as a school, a two-room schoolhouse, for uh, decades and eventually was taken over by the Grange, uh, the Hopkinton Grange. Um, and then we purchased it in 1991 and uh, as a place for as a repository, more or less, a meeting facility and room, you know, rooms for meeting, and then also uh, as a place to store so much of the wonderful materials that the people of Hopkinton have been so generous to share with us. And in the last, I would say, 10 years or so, 10 or 12 years, 
it's really taken off in terms of we've created a museum and uh, we have volunteers there on a regular basis. Uh, we open one day a week for the public to come in um, and see our collection or to do genealogical research or any other kind of research as well. Um, we have a lot of really important materials dating back really is from right from the very beginning of town. And some items that are even earlier from the beginning, you know, before 1715 when we were founded as a town. Um, then a lot of credit for that goes to some previous, the previous president, Bill Shaw, he was president for 10 years, and his very active board, we had some terrific members of the board, who, some of whom are still on our board with us, but they put in a lot of time, energy, and effort, all volunteer again, to make this um, a place really to honor or Hopkinton and Hopkinton's history. Well, I just want to mention, uh, to compliment that, that if people are looking for us, and you said 168 Hayden Row, mm -hmm. when they drive by, they'll see a sign that says the History Center. Yes. Um, because, yes, it does house the, the Hopkinton Historical Society, which preserves mm -hmm. the site and the collections. Uh, also, he has their meetings there. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't too long ago we changed the sign to say the History Center yes. because it really is a place where so much of Hopkinton's history is preserved. Yes. And um, you mentioned that we get the things that are in the center, the artifacts and the collections, through generous donations. Yes. And so uh, we do have to thank all of the people and families you know, throughout Hopkinton's history that have donated things. Yes. Um, maybe you could mention some of the more notable things that we, we keep there. Well, one, we have two really exciting things, I think, in the last few years that we've acquired. And one of them is the Fitch Collection. Some people um, may be familiar with the Fitch name. It was, uh, it's a very storied name in Hopkinton history. The Fitch family, farm house was, is still existing on um, Ash Street, uh, was known as the Elmwood Farm. It's still in existence. It's the big brick farmhouse. Um, the, the family who currently lives there uh, has a little egg stand, fresh egg stand out in front of their house. So if people are familiar with that, they'll know which house I'm talking about. This particular family, um, as I said, was here for generations in town. And their uh, descend, a descendant of theirs who lives in Maine has donated uh, just an enormous quantity of materials that are directly related to Hopkinton history, but United States history as well. The Fitches were ardent abolitionists, anti-slavery activists. One of the Fitches went out to Kansas and um, with some Massachusetts anti-slavery advocates who went out there to settle Kansas. There was a, a bitter fight in Kansas. Would Kansas come into the Union as a slave state or as a free state? And Massachusetts sent out um, very, again, very ardent anti-slavery advocates to go out and settle and to fight for Kansas coming in as a free state. There, was, uh, there were multiple um, skirmishes, military type skirmishes between people who wanted it to come in as slave and people who wanted it to come in as a free state. Um, it became known as Bloody Kansas. And John Brown, the famous uh, mm -hmm. John Brown, who oh, was, uh, it was hung for his, his uh, anti-slavery activism, um, you know, was the person who was pretty much in charge of all the Massachusetts folks who were out there trying to uh, preserve Kansas for the Union. And uh, one of the Fitches was very actively involved in that particular aspect of American history. So in addition to Hopkinton history, it, they're also related to the greater United States history, as so much of our history is. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting how we have so many famous uh, connections to the larger world. Of course, there's Daniel Shea, who, who was the um, uh, anti-tax rebel after the 
uh, after the Revolutionary War, who rallied people to farmers to fight against um, f fight against the state and the federal government taxing uh, land. Um, so we we might know this famous Shays Rebellion, and Daniel Shea was Daniel Shays was born here in Hopkinton. Um, we also have a connection to the Mormon Church. Um, the founder of the Mormon Church, and my, his name is escaping me at the moment. Um, his, I'm sorry, I can't his, help you his there. Parents, <laughs> um, I, I'll think of it in a minute. But his parents uh, lived here in Hopkinton, and they left Hopkinton and moved to upstate New York, and that's where he was born. And um, and then he became, um, you know, founded this incredibly uh, active still, you know couple hundred years later, uh, religious or, um, organization here in the United States. And last but not least, we have a connection to Buffalo Bill. <laughs> Buffalo Bill's family, I think Buffalo Bill's family was originally from Hopkinton, and Buffalo Bill's family used to hold an annual reunion here in Hopkinton for um, decades, uh, through the 20s and 30s, well into the 40s, I believe, until after the war. Um, when I think that's when they stopped having it. But it was a very big family reunion. It was very famous. So we, we have those connections. The other collection that we have that, again, we're very excited about is um, the collection um, of our own, um, which it's Native American artifacts collected by the Cheney family of Pond Street. Ora Cheney was the last person who lived in the house on Pond Street, the fa family house on Pond Street. And after he died and his family, um, you know, remaining re uh, descendants, uh, went through the house and everything and had their materials that they wanted from the family, they offered the historical society what remained in the house. And our very active volunteer, Ron Yankee, went over and took charge of that. And Ron did a terrific job taking boxes and boxes of things from the Cheney attic, which again, had been in the family for a very long time. And um, in that, and many of those boxes were collections of um, Native American tools. And some we might consider to be um, tools for, for farming, also tools, um, arrowheads, that, that type of thing. Um, so Linda Connolly, our archivist at the, at the um, Historical Society, some pe folks may know her from the Hopkinton the library. library. Yeah, she works there too. Yes, yeah. she works there too, and she's our archivist at, at um, the Historical Society. Linda got in touch with a professor, an archeological professor from uh, UMass Amherst, who, with his grad students, is currently, um, you know, organizing this collection for us, dating it for us, telling us, um, you know, giving us some background and information about these very famous, uh, these very important Native American artifacts from this area. Um, the Cheney family was very interesting family. They used to ride, they used to take a ride every year from Hopkinton down to Florida in a hearse, I'm told. I'm told it was in a hearse. A, they used to drive in it. They were, or himself was quite eccentric. Um, and they would, they had collect, they collected rocks and seashells and all these other things along the way. So one of the things that we were not sure about were if the Native American artifacts were from this particular area, and they in fact are. So um, it, it's a, it's an exciting collection. It's an exciting find. And with both the Fitch collection and the Cheney collection, we hope to have everything cataloged, organized, um, so that we can start sharing this with the town um, in the next few months, so people can come in and see these terrific, um, terrific things that they've they've left for us to share with the community. Now, do I remember correctly? There was a grant that uh, allowed us to hire that professor to do this work. Yes, because it had to. It has to be done professionally. Right. Yeah. Yes, the we got a we got a 
grant from the uh, Community Preservation Committee. And again, our tax dollars at work, what a wonderful ex thing that is, a source for us in terms of making sure that these, uh, you know, things like this stay, are, are noted and, and recorded and that they stay uh, available and accessible to all citizens. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's really important for people to know that the History Center not only itself is a historical building, yes. but within it, um, this, the Hopkinton Historical Society and the Board of Directors work mm -hmm. so hard to preserve and protect mm -hmm. all of the history that's in there. Yes. And one of the more recent things that we acquired uh, through the Colella family was, yes. of course, the sign from the Colella supermarket that right. had been in town 75 years. Yes. And... Um, that one, it warms my heart to see that yes. displayed up on one of our walls right. through a generous donation from the Colella family. Yes, yes. Yeah. And if anybody's missing that beautiful green neon sign, yeah. they're welcome to come in and see it yes. at any time. And we've recently been contacted by the Center School uh, Reuse Committee to see if perhaps we will house the Center School sign once the school closes, and, and the board has recently agreed to do that as well. Yeah. We have some wonderful signs down there from a Hopkinton Bank, the Hopkinton, uh, uh, an old post office in town, the Woodville Post Office. So we, we just have so much uh, that I think is of interest to just about everybody who lives here. Yeah. Uh, whether you've been in town a few short years or a very long time, right. there's something for everybody. Or if you're just new to town and you yes. want to know more about the history of Hopkinton. Now, I know right now we have limited museum hours only mm -hmm. on Mondays um, between 2 and 5. Right. But for people who want to do some research or uh, need to get in another time, sometimes mm -hmm. we can make arrangements for that. Yes. And we are looking to hopefully be able to expand those hours in the, in the near future. Yes. Um, but I don't want time to get away from us without talking about some of the important events that we have on, yes. you know, because it's important for the community to know that we do run programs mm -hmm. and events yes. uh, to share history, both past and more recent. So mm -hmm. why don't you tell us about some of the things that we've got coming up? Well, we're really excited. Uh, we have a great weekend coming up in early April, on April 7th. Um, which is a Saturday, a Saturday morning at 9 a.m., we're going to host Doug Harris of the Narragansett Tribe, who is currently uh, uh, pretty much on a speaking tour, I guess you would call it, talking to people about um, Native American memorial stone um, formations that are found in many of the woods and you know undeveloped lands in communities in Massachusetts, including some sites here in Hopkinton. So um, with, the, with the idea of raising awareness about these, so in fact we will be able to, um, again, identify them, preserve them, keep them as part of our history, particularly our history of the indigenous people who were here long before all of us. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're excited about that. Um, and that actually, uh, these two events that are taking place on the 7th of April, and then again, uh, we're having another event on the 8th, uh, they're sponsored uh, by our own Phipps Insurance Agency right here on Main Street in Hopkinton. We are very lucky and fortunate to um, have the sponsorship for these events as, of course, it costs money to bring people in and to, to open the building and all of that. So we try to keep our, our events either free or at a minimal donation for non-members. Um, so these two events are, will actually be free, both of them, again, due to this generous grant from Phipps Insurance. Mm -hmm. Now, on Sunday the 8th, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we are going to have uh, a author, Patrick Kennedy, who's going to come in with his dad, who is his co-author on a book, and talk to us about a man known as Bricklayer Bill. Bricklayer Bill and the um, Working Man's uh, Boston Marathon. 
uh, uh, Patrick Kennedy is actually a descendant of bricklayer Bill Kennedy, who uh, began running the marathon after World War I and ran it for over 20 years. And he has a fascinating story to tell and um, evidently left quite a bit of um, quite a bit of material so that they were able to use his own words, Bill's own words, and plus his scrapbooks and other materials from those 20 years of running the, the Boston Marathon. So um, that, meet, that afternoon is also, um, we, each year in April, we hold a joint meeting with the Ashland Historical Society. And so Ashland um, is coming, the Ashland Historical Society Society folks are coming to this event as well. So we're excited to welcome them. And, and we think we might owe it to them, seeing as we kind of, we've, well, you know, now we have the, the start of the marathon when originally it started yeah. in their town. <laughs> but if you go back even further, most of us know that Ashland was once a part of Hopkinton. So in the end, it's, it just came full circle. Yeah, we're all brothers and sisters. We're all <laughs> brothers and sisters. So we're happy to have that. And again, free and open to the public, 2 p.m. on April 8th. Yeah, and then we have, of course, the very exciting Boston Marathon. Yes. And we are sponsoring a runner this year. Yes, we're really excited. Elisa Puglio from um, Natick is running the marathon to raise funds for us um, as a society. And um, yes, she's great. Um, she loves local history, and uh, she's her house is on the marathon route in Natick. She's done half marathons before, and every year she told us that every year the marathon runners go by her house and she thinks she has thought I, I'd really like to be a part of that and so she is p running for us this year yeah. and we're really grateful for for that well and we were very fortunate to get a number because those things are very coveted so yes. we are able to get you know yes. be able to sponsor a runner that will help raise money for us yes um, Time's going to run out quickly. Let's talk a little bit about membership and money and maybe corporate sponsorship because I want everyone to know that we are a 501c3 yes. nonprofit, mm -hmm. and the only way that we're able to preserve the history and the things that we have are through donations and yes. membership. So why don't you talk about that a little yes. bit? Yes. Well, um, we have a membership structure of family members once a year for $30, and it covers your whole family. We also have a single membership and a student membership for $20 a year um, and uh, what that allows you to do is to attend all of these events free of charge again sometimes we have to charge a minimal donation yeah, to those very, non very small yeah. very small donation to those who are not members um, but if you are a member you get to um, you get to come free to all the events we have an annual strawberry shortcake uh, night and we have uh, we usually have a, a midwinter social and and members are all invited to that as well to you know help out with that um, but again we are all volunteer we sub subside totally in terms of donations we don't get any funding outside of grant funding from the town so we would like you know people to know that um, uh, we are very interested um, in corporate sponsorship if there are people in Hopkinton who would like their names to be associated with the Historical Society, which th we think is a pretty special thing, mm -hmm. um, such as Phipps Insurance did with, with for us this year. Um, you know, we would welcome that. We would welcome inquiries around that. The other thing that a lot of people don't know is we have a meeting space in our building, which can be rented for a, a small amount compared to other places. Um, we open ourselves to, um, you know, local organizations, even social events. People can rent the meeting space for that. Um, and, um, you know, I think that it's a, a good way to support us and it's a good way to support, um, you know, save money for your own organization um, by renting from us. So people who are interested in in any of these things, sponsorship, renting the meeting space, um, and or if folks are interested at all, we've, we have hosted um, uh, 
some groups, especially uh, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Cub Scouts, Brownies, we have hosted um, some scout meetings there. So uh, particularly when kids are working on their badges for local history or civic involvement or things like that. Mm -hmm. So we're happy to do that. And, and that we do without charge. Um, so they can contact us. Our, our website is, um, you can just Google Hopkinton History Society. But historical Society. Hist yeah. Historical Society. But you have to make sure that you um, locate us in, in Massachusetts, as there's a very active Hopkinton Historical Society in both New Hampshire and Rhode Island. So make sure you're on the right on page. On the Massachusetts page. Yeah. <laughs> on the Massachusetts page. And we have a great um, Facebook page, uh, Hopkinton Historical Society on Facebook and a Twitter account. So you can always follow us in those places and see what's going on and keep up to date with, with everything there as well. Mm -hmm. And just so people know when they see the show, uh, because we might air it in the future sometime right, too, right. Uh, we're talking about events that are going to be held in April of 2018. Yes. Uh, but of course, the Society is open to new membership at any point in time, and donations are much appreciated. Yes. Well, thank you, Anne, so thank much you, for being Mary. with us today. And thank you for joining us for this program and hearing about the Hopkinton Historical Society and all their work. For more information about the Historical Society, visit their website listed at the end of the show. For more information concerning All About Hopkinton, find us on hcam.tv. If you or someone you know is having an impact on our community, we want to hear about it. Send an email to jim at hcam.tv and perhaps you'll see them sharing their story right here on All About Hopkinton. I'm Mary Arnott and thanks for watching. Did you know there are other ways to reduce your pain besides taking medications? For example, mindfulness. I'm Dr. Mike Guidi, family medicine doctor based in Essex County. I use mindfulness techniques with my own patients during office visits, and I'm here to tell you how you can prevent addiction. It is a way to train your brain to manage pain. Reducing your pain through mindfulness could mean you need less medication or a safer type of medication. It can also help you reduce your stress and recover from past trauma. That means you become less likely to develop an addiction, whether opioids, alcohol, or any other substance. In brain research, we scan people's brains before they start practicing mindfulness and after they've been practicing it daily for eight weeks. We see actual changes in the way their brains are wired. We see those people drawing more on their judgment and reasoning skills, resulting in safer behaviors. Massachusetts has great resources about effective mindfulness techniques. To find out more, go to massmed.org.